1904 and seemingly inoffensive axiom was introduced in the new branch of mathematics of set theory. And although seemingly inoffensive, it is one of the most controversial principles of all mathematics. This axiom has a really interesting place in the foundations of mathematics, and we will try to explain its meaning, and why it's controversial. The axiom seems pretty simple at first. Given a collection of non-empty sets, we can choose one element from each set. This is it. So, given any collection of sets, it is possible to assemble a new set containing exactly one element from each member of the given collection. Let's suppose these are a collection of sets. And let's imagine the yellow box is going to select one element of each set. The yellow box then, creates a set with the selected elements. We call this box the choice function. Many times, we don't need such axiom. We can define a function or a rule, that chooses or selects one element of each set. Such rule could be, choose the least number of each set, or the largest, or any other rule that finds a pattern and makes a choice based on that pattern. Even if our sets are infinite but countable, like the set of natural, integer, or rational numbers, for example, we don't need the axiom of choice. We can give a rule to select the elements. We don't need the choice function given by the axiom of choice. We can construct a function ourselves. We can choose the least number, in the case of a subset of the naturals, or the middle number in the case of an open interval of the rational numbers, for example. We can explicitly construct a function. But not every collection of sets allows a deterministic rule like this. The axiom of choice says that we can choose an element from each set, even if we can't describe a rule for making that choice. It is by no means obvious how to produce a choice function for the collection of arbitrary sets of real numbers. Let's say, the red sphere represents a random set of real numbers. And the yellow spheres represent an uncountable number of elements in such a set, with no patterns. We could have infinitely many sets with infinitely many elements of real numbers. Without patterns, we can't explicitly give any rules to select an element of each set. But the axiom of choice give us such function. However, it only says that it exists. It doesn't define it or describe it. We don't know what such function is. We only know that it exists. The axiom of choice has weird effects precisely because it is so unlimited. It tells us that given any infinite collection of infinite sets, we can pick one element from each set, even if the sets are too big to really understand, and even if we don't have any extra structure to guide us. One of the most weird and famous consequences of the axiom of choice, is the Banach-Tarski paradox. The paradox shows that one consequence of the axiom of choice is that, any solid sphere can be split into finitely many pieces, which can be reassembled to form two solid spheres, of the same size. That means we've doubled the volume of our stuff just by moving the pieces around, which seems implausible. We definitely can't do that with a real ball. Zamello's 1904 introduction of the axiom, as well as the use to which he put it, provoked considerable criticism from the mathematicians of the day. The main objection raised, was to what some saw as its highly non-constructive character. While the axiom asserts the possibility of making a number of, perhaps even an uncountable number, of arbitrary, choices, it gives no indication whatsoever of how these choices are actually to be affected of how choice functions are to be defined. However, as the debate concerning the axiom of choice rumbled on, it became apparent that the proofs of a number of significant mathematical theorems made essential use of it, thereby leading many mathematicians to treat it as an indispensable tool of their trade. Zamello's original purpose in introducing the axiom of choice was to establish a central principle of Cantor's set theory, namely, that every set admits a well-ordering. For a better definition of well orders, see our video series of ordinal numbers. But as a quick reminder, a well order on a set, is a total order with the property that every non-empty subset has a least element. 
So, it's not only necessary that the set has a least element, but any subset has also a least element. For example, the set of the natural numbers with their standard ordering, has a least element, 0, but also, any subset of the natural numbers, have also a least element. The set of the rational numbers, with their standard ordering, is not a well ordering. However, we can easily find well orders on the rational numbers, without using the axiom of choice. The real numbers with their standard ordering don't have a least element. However, the axiom of choice guarantees a well ordering. It doesn't describe this ordering, but there is one. Apart from its highly non-constructive, even idealist character, some mathematicians also questioned the soundness of the axiom of choice. It wasn't until the middle 1930s that the question of the soundness of the axiom of choice was demonstrated. Kurt Gödel's proved its consistency relative to the other axioms of set theory. That is, no contradiction is deducible from the standard set theory when used together with the axiom of choice. Eventually, it became apparent that the proofs of a number of significant mathematical theorems on different fields of mathematics made essential use of it. Thereby leading many mathematicians to treat it as an indispensable tool of their trade. 